Let's move on to some agricultural issues because we heard yesterday by Christmas you may not be able to find Australian rice on our supermarket shelves, low rainfall, dry weather. Of course, COVID panic buying, all of this has diminished stock. Well, that's the blame, that's what we're being told. We may have to import rice from Vietnam. I'm joined now by Water Minister Melinda Pavey. She joins me now from Sydney. Now, Linda, I'm going to get to these rice issues, but I have to ask you, you're in the Cabinet. Will New South Wales support a public register for child sex offenders, as you just heard advocated for by Bruce Morecambe? Bruce advocated brilliantly for it, and I think touching on the international experience is really important. But for a register to work, it's got to be a nationally based register, Peter. Um, we do need to know, and I think the threats are going to become even more so with what kids are seeing online, out of our control sometimes as parents. Look, what Bruce um, and Denise have been through and Daniel, uh, you've got to respect what he has to say. And yeah, yeah, but just let me just jump in there. The money's been provided by Peter Dutton. He will establish, the Commonwealth will put one together. They just need all the states to join up because you guys hold the information about pedophiles convicted in New South Wales. So will the New South Wales government agree to join a national register? Look, I think there is an important conversation for us to have and I'm sure the Attorney General um, will be part of that conversation. But as I just said, the, the, the arguments put up by Bruce, there's a lot of common sense there. We can look at what mm. is happening internationally. Um, as you know, Peter, I'm the Water Minister, not the Attorney General, but I was very moved by your interview and the arguments that he put up tonight. OK, well, the, the federal government, I'll leave it here, but the federal government announced its policy 12 months ago, last May. I'm going to chase down your Attorney General. I know you're the Water Minister, but please, when you get back into the Cabinet room, thump the table and say, this is not going away. And there's less and less opposition than I've ever seen it to something like this. Every single state in America has it. They have it in the UK. The fact that we don't have it here in Australia, you know, we're more concerned about bloody koalas at the moment than kids. We've got to have this conversation. We've got to have this conversation. All right, water. Let's get onto your portfolio. You and I talked about the drought, the impact, particularly we talked about the Riverina not so long ago, and you were really worried about what this would do to our rice industry. It's very clear now, we see these statistics and reports out there yesterday that we're going to have to start importing rice. There's been a water plan announced by Keith Pitt. I think there's a lot of common sense in Keith Pitt's plan. Are you confident that this is going to turn the corner and we're going to keep these jobs in regional Australia? I am confident simply because of the rain, Peter. Um, we've had some good, uh, good falls and we've got some even better falls predicted over the next week. You need water allocations and, and rice has grown uh, off general security allocations in New South Wales. We produce about a million tonnes a year uh, in a good season. We've only been about 10% of that because, uh, because of the drought. Um, the best chance to grow rice is when we have water in the dams. We've got that mm -hmm. and I've just got to say, for those people out there that think we shouldn't be growing rice in Australia, we're the best rice rowers in the world and because of our production, our science and research, we've actually at times reduced the water consumption around the planet by about 50% by the way we grow our rice. So I'm a big supporter of it. Uh, yes, you're right. Whilst we're going to get some crops in, uh, in September, October, uh, they won't be harvested and on the supermarket shelves till about March. And the best thing about rice in Leeton and Daniliquin, we've got hundreds of people employed. We want to keep that going. Um, it is tough and, and we needed these allocations. But to the point about Keith Pitt, he's listened to New South Wales. He's listened to the arguments that we've been putting up. We just have no more water to give. And to have him take the 450 gigalitres off the table that Tony Burke put on the table um, is just common sense. We need to support our farmers' production and, uh, and feeding our nation and no more important time uh, that we've seen that through uh, this crisis that, you know, we did have the Prime Minister uh, ring the leadership in Vietnam to ensure that we were going to have rice exports into Australia because of the drought. So support our growers, support what we do um, and make sure you don't take any more water off us. I just got a copy of your release, you know, uh, great news for people in and around the Lachlan, if you know the Lachlan community out west in New South Wales, 28% increase in water allocation there for users. Uh, this is all water that they haven't seen since August 2017. In that announcement from the Federal Minister Keith Pitt, no more environmental water buybacks. He's going to get the water savings. Uh, from just smart things like, you know, covering culverts and channels and being smarter about how we develop, you know, 
water policy that has an engineering basis as opposed to environmental activism, $170 million on the table for projects in communities. This has got to put some heart into those regional towns, doesn't it? It certainly does, and they fought for it. They absolutely fought for it and we listened. And there's also another $2 billion or so sitting in uh, the Murray-Darling Basin Authority that we think could be spent on other projects which could also improve uh, our native fish. I mean, carp is still the scourge of the Murray-Darling Basin system. Um, we've got ideas and ways we can get some more money out the door over that $170 million, uh, you know, up to $2 billion across South Australia. New South Wales and Victoria that uh, that could improve river health by getting rid of the carp. So, you know, it's not just about water. There's other environmental things we can do that people can enjoy a better fish. Um, and we've got a lot of excitement around those ideas that uh, that we want to present to Keith Pitt. He has listened. He has acted. Mm -hmm. And the 450 gigs is off the table. I've got to ask you about the National Party. I'm not going to go back into all the rubbish from last week, but I listened to some comments you made that anyone who takes the National Party for granted inside the coalition makes a big mistake. That's pretty much what I used to always say in Canberra. You know, you treat the Nats as a junior partner, you're headed for some sort of cropper because the National Party having its own identity is the only reason that Liberals can ever form government. They can't form government in their own right. They always require the National Party support. Do you think you can work through these issues on koalas, you know, get a proper policy that's not written by a bureaucrat and, and you know, slip through by regulation, get a good outcome and sort of mend this breach? Absolutely, we have to, because we are the best government in, in uh, Australia, um, of all the states, we're the lead. And, and, and I think our response to COVID has been because it's been a genuine collaboration, city and country members working together. As you know, Peter, we are at the heart of our communities every day. National Party MPs hear and listen to what their communities say. And I and my community want to see the koala population thrive, uh, but it shouldn't be a burden on farmers who love their koalas and want to be able to, to live well with them. But we also have just been through these fires and we saw so many koalas killed in those ferocious fires. We mm. want uh, a better focus on land management of our public estate and not putting the burden on our, on, our, uh, on our farmers and also just, you know, the common sense stuff. You know, we've got Mount Panorama and the Newcastle foreshore as, ki as key koala habitat. It doesn't gel well with country people. We'll work through those um, issues. I know we will. Uh, we've got too much at stake for New South Wales. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm just really proud of our team. I know it's been tough for everybody involved, but we will get through the other side on this and common sense will prevail. Well, fingers crossed. Common sense on that and the register. I'll be keeping you honest too. Melinda Pavey, thank you for your time. Thank you, Peter.